Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to Putupad Sri Bhakti Lok Parmadvaita Maharaj, Putupad Sri Patanjati Maharaj, so this morning we are beginning the discussion about the appearance of Sri Krishna in this world. In the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, now Shukadev Goswami has been speaking continuously for four days. Four days are over. We are now coming to the fifth day. In the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadeva Goswami described the history of the Sun dynasty, the dynasty of Surya Dev, and the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra. Hare Krishna. So, and then he began to describe the history of the Chandrabanks, the Moon Dynasty, and the great personalities in that line, like uh, Yadu Maharaj. And gradually, gradually, he told the genealogical succession, the family tree coming down to Vasudev Maharaj and to Sri Krishna. So then, hearing this, Parikshit Maharaj said, 
ओ शुकदेव का स्वामी प्लीज टेल मी व्हाई डिड सी कृष्ण टेक हिज बर्थ इन दिस वर्ल्ड व्हाट वाज द कोर्स व्हाट वाज द रीजन व्हाट पर्पस डिड ही हैव टू फुलफिल कमिंग हियर ही इज वृंदावन बिहारी enjoying his eternal beautiful pastimes in this spiritual world what was the necessi- necessity of krishna to come here so shukadev goswami he said yada yada hi dharmasya kshayo vridish chapap manaha whenever there is the kshay that is the deterioration of dharma religious principles and vridish chapap manaha and the flourishing of the sinful activities and sinful people in this world then sri krishna comes to establish dharma and kill the demons so prakshit maharaj he said no no i am not satisfied with this answer <laughs> because krishna is not obliged to appear to kill demons and establish dharma that is the uh, job that is the function of vishnu brahma creates shiva destroys and vishnu maintains the universe this is not krishna's uh, responsibility and also kamsa though he was a big demon he was not a really very powerful demon like hiranyakashipu and hiranyaksha hiranyakashipu was much more powerful than kamsa maharaj and krishna swayam bhagavan the original personality of godhead did not need to appear to finish off hiranyakashipu lord nishinga dev did it so now a smaller demon is here there's no need for bhagavan swayam the supreme lord to come and kill kamsa maharaj also if you say oh he has come to establish dharma or more than that he has come to establish bhakti mark the path of pure bhakti also it's not necessary for sri krishna to do that because supreme lord can send great acharyas like ramanuja acharya like madhva acharya and they can establish the bhakti mark so shukadev ko swami sorry prakshit maharaj he said my question is this why does swayam bhagavan that is the origin of all the avatars why does avatari shri krishna appear in this world what is the necessity of that so then this is a, happens repeatedly in sri mad bhagavatam prakshit maharaj asks the question and shukadev goswami doesn't give the actual answer he gives another answer to test the disciple to see if he's paying attention and thinking deeply about the subject so now be requested to explain deeply why krishna must appear not just external reasons then shukadev goswami he unveiled the actual reason for the appearance of shri krishna so he said kalau janishyamananam duka shoka tamonudam anugrahaya bhaktanam supunyam vyatanotyashah very important verse kalo janishyamananam means those people who will take birth in the future in kali yuga krishna has appeared for them that by performing his pastimes here then supanyam gatanot yasha his fame will spread everywhere krishna katha will spread everywhere and the living entities of kali yuga the devotees who take birth in kali yuga then duka shoka tamo muda nudam that means that in this kali yuga when krishna katha is spreading everywhere it takes away the misery of the people it takes away the lamentation it takes away the uh, ignorance the ego of all the worldly persons that's the power of krishna katha but krishna is appearing anugrahaya bhaktanam for the devotees 
those devotees are not affected by ignorance, they're not affected by lamentation, they're not affected by misery. Only their mm, misery is a separation from Krishna. So Krishna is appearing for those devotees. That Harikata will spread everywhere, and when those devotees appear in Kali Yuga, they will get the uh, great relishment from hearing that Harikata. So, incidentally, all of the general ignorant people of Kali Yuga, because Krishna appears and manifests his kata for the devotees, then the general people, they also get uplifted and liberated and develop bhakti through that Harikata. So, Anugrahaya Bhaktanam means he appears for the devotees. So, especially the main reason for his appearance is to give Anugraha mercy to his Antaras, his Parshat, his Parikar. That means his associates. So, that raises a very wonderful point. Krishna is already in Goloka Vrindavan with all of his associates and he's giving so much happiness and so much pleasure to them there. So why does he appear in this world, Anugraya Bhaktanam, to give joy to his eternal associates? Hmm? Because that's the main reason of his appearance, to give joy to his eternal associates. Hmm? And by giving joy to them, he relishes rasa, because he's rasik shekha, prema rasa near jaskari tayashwada. So the reason is this, there are four leelas that take place in this world, that don't take place in the Nityadham in Goloka Vrindavan. There are four leelas which are manifest here in Bhoma Vrindavan, which are not manifest there. So what are those four leelas? First of all, Krishna's Janma Lila, Krishna's birth pastime. So, in the evening class, we'll discuss how Krishna appeared in the prison cell of Kamsamaraj to Vasudev and Devaki. And tomorrow, we'll discuss how Krishna was born naturally from Madhya Shoda and how Bridge Basti celebrated Krishna's birth in Braja. Com Mathura and Vrindavan have completely different moods. So we say it in Vrindavan for tomorrow for actual Janmashtami day. Now, so the first Leela is Janma Leela, birth year is not there. In the spiritual world, see Krishna is eternally performing his pastimes. Playing the flute as a youth and dressed as a cowherd boy. Everyone there in the Golok Vrindavan knows, but Krishna was born from Madhya Yashoda. They have that Abhiman, they have that Samskar, that impression. But that Leela has never taken place there. That actual birth Leela only takes place here in this world. So this is the first Leela. Then, the second type of Leela that takes place here. That is the Asurbad Leela, the killing of demons. So, the killing of demons, this takes place only to inspire and refresh the love of the bridge buses. For example, when Krishna was born, there was a big celebration for a few days. But after six days, when Krishna was six days old, the excitement of the celebration had subsided somewhat. So then Yoga Maya brought Putana there. And Putana tried to kill Krishna and everyone was afraid but then when they realized Krishna had been saved by the mercy of Lord Narayan because Nanda Maharaj worships Lord Narayan so by the piety of Nanda Maharaj Krishna has been saved then their love was intensified so the demons no, demon, no demonic person can enter into Braja it's a transcendental place but Yoga Maya brings them there allows them to come only to make some waves in the ocean of praying, make more waves in the ocean of praying. So, the killing of Putana, Trinavarta, Shakatasur, and so on, this does not take place in the spiritual world, that is here in this field. Then, the next aspect of Krishna Lila, which is absent in the spiritual world, is some people say Parakya. The, 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 Gopis are married to others and they have to meet with Krishna secretly. But in Goloka Vrindavan, Radha Krishna married, there's no problem there. 
Some people say, some lines they say like this. According to their mood. But in the pure line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Rupa Goswami, we know that there is a Parakya mood, Paramo love here, and also Paramo, Paramo, Paramo love there as well, in both places. But what is here and not there is the actual marriages of the gopis. gopis. There, the gopis, they are eternally staying with their in-laws, their mother-in-laws, and secretly they have to meet with Krishna. But here in this world, they grow up with their parents, and then the news comes. Oh, we have arranged your marriage. And then those gopis are, oh, they feel like they've been given poison. Hmm? Very soon you'll have to go to the house of your husband and his parents. Oh, next week you have to go. And then it was delayed. Next week you have to go. Next week you have to go. Slowly. So, hearing these words, you have to go to the house of your husband was like a drop of poison. Actually, going to the house of the husband was enough poison to kill the gopis. But because they were told again and again, you have to go next week, you have to go next week, and it was delayed, then they developed some immunity to that poison. Huh? You know, the example is given in Vedic times. The kings, they used to keep some young girls, and that from childhood, they used to inject them with a little poison. Give them a little poison. And slowly, slowly, by the time they became young and beautiful, they were immune to that poison, but they themselves were completely toxic. And then if they wanted to assassinate some enemy, they would send that girl to go and uh, secretly meet with that king or whoever it was, and when she would kiss him, then that person would die, she was so toxic. Mm -hmm. So, in this way, gopis are told, oh, next week you have to go to your husband's house. No, next week, the week after. So finally when it's told, today you have to go. Then gopis, they would have died, but they managed to stay alive because they become, they develop some resistance to that poison by hearing that bad news every day. And so, they, they experience uh, being married and then moving to the house of their in-laws. So that Leela is only in this world. It's very, very intense Leela. In the spiritual world, the gopis' husbands are not there. Here the gopis' husbands have manifest forms. So in the spiritual world, there's only Abhiman. That is a conception. I am married, I have a husband. And I'm always trying to avoid him. Gopis thinking this way. But in this world, that Abhiman actually has a, a manifest form that the people of the world can see. So that is the, the third aspect which is manifest here. Now, the fourth aspect is Krishna's Gaman Agaman Lila. That means coming and going. In the spiritual world, Krishna is eternally in Vrindavan, He is eternally in Mathura, and He is eternally in Dwarka. But when He comes to this world, He is in Vrindavan, then He leaves, but not in Mathura or Dwarka. He leaves Vrindavan and goes to Mathura. And then He leaves Mathura and goes to Dwarka. Then after many years, He comes back to Mathura, and then from Mathura He comes back to Vrindavan. So this is called Gaman Agaman, coming and going past times. So that is also only in this world. And that is very, very important. So, Anugrahaya Bhaktanam. Krishna is appearing in this world to uh, give mercy to His eternal associates. Why? Because in this Gaman Gaman Lila, there is very intense Prema Rasa. In the Padma Purana, example has been given, there it is said, Kramam Anu Rasa Puram Sudavat Krishna Chandraha. Kramam Anu Rasa Puram Sudavat Krishna Chandraha. Kramam means a sequence. That the sequence of Krishna's Leela in this world is coming in a special order to bring about the complete experience of Rasa. So, Sudhava Krishna Chandraha means Krishna is like a Sudha, that means a cook. So, just as when a cook is making some soup, so they get the water, they get the, the vegetables, 
they add the vegetables, then on the side they're making the chorns, they're grinding the spices and then adding them to the, to the ghee. And then at the right time, then they add the spices and they stir it. So there's a sequence in which the cook prepares the soup, so it will be very, very delicious. So in the same way, there's a sequence in Krishna's Leela. That is, oh, when he's a boy, before he becomes a teenage, in his, the end of the Pauganda Leela, he dances on the head of Kaliya. And when the gopis see his beauty on that day, oh, then their love is... Their Madhurasa, their romantic love for Krishna, increases, or rather manifests, because in childhood, the gopis' love for Krishna is called Samanya Rati. It's a general type of love. But when their childhood is coming to an end and they realize, oh, I don't just love Krishna with affection, with sneha, but he's a boy and I am a girl. Hmm? And the Madhuras begins to appear. So that Purvarag, that attachment for Sri Krishna in Madhurasa is just coming in the in childhood, before the adolescence, Kishore Leela comes. So that took place when Krishna danced on the head of Kaliya. Hmm? So, in fact, that's why he danced. Because when the gopis came there and saw that Krishna was wrapped in the coils of the serpent Kaliya, uh, they were fainting. And Krishna, all the bridge buses were coming. Nanda, Yashoda, coward boys, even the cows, everyone came to see. And Krishna was wrapped up in the coils of Kaliya and he was looking. Oh, did the gopis come yet? He was waiting, waiting. And then when he saw that the gopis arrived, still waiting. Then he saw that Radharani arrived. Then Krishna broke out from the cause of Kaliya and he began to dance. But why was he dancing? Because the frame of Braj Gopis was so intense it was making him dance. Bhaktera Nachai, Krishna Nachaya, Prema Bhaktera Nachai, Apeni Nachai, Tina Nachi Ekatai. It is Prem that makes Krishna dance. And Prem makes the devotee dance and Prem itself also, all three dance together. So, the Purvarag, the awakening of the romantic love, came at the time of the Kaliya Lila. Then afterwards we see that Krishna lifted Giraj Govardhan. Hmm? All gopis, they wanted to hmm, stay with Krishna in his home, but they could not because their marriages had been arranged to others. But by lifting Govardhan, and all gopis coming underneath Govardhan Hill, gopis had the experience what it's like to live with Krishna in the same house, at least for seven days. So secretly, they had a relishment of the fulfillment of that desire. Hmm? And then after that, oh, there was also the Krishna stealing the clothes of Braj Gopis as well, taking away their shyness. So after Krishna had removed the shyness of Gopis, after he had increased their love and gave them a taste of a relationship, closer relationship through Govardhan Lila, then the Rasa Lila came. And Gopis abandoned everything to meet with Krishna. And then after that, Krishna killed Aristasur. And after killing Aristasur, Radharani said, don't touch me. You have to purify yourself. So Krishna manifested Shamakund and Radharani manifested Radhakund. So in this way, there's a sequence. Now Radhakund Lila comes. And there's a sequence to Krishna's Lila. And the, the relishment is going higher and higher. But then Akrura comes and takes Krishna to Mathura. And there's great separation. Krishna sends Uddhav. Then Krishna goes to Dwarka and Krishna sends Balaram. Then there's a meeting at Kurukshetra at the time of the solar eclipse. And gopis want to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan, but he doesn't go with him. He returns back to Dwarka and then their separation is very, very high. And finally, after Krishna went to Mathura from Dwarka to kill Dantavakra, then he crosses the Jamuna in his chariot and meets with the Vrajabhasis in the forest of Lovaban. And there's a great reunion after long separation. So this is a Samridhi Man Sambhog, fully flourishing, successful uh, meeting of Krishna and Braj Gopis after long separation. So we see that in this world, there's a sequence to Krishna Leela by which all the associates of Krishna can uh, relish Prema Rasa Nirajas, the essence of Prem. Therefore, in the Padma Purana, he said, Kramam Anurasapuram Sudhavat Krishna Chandraha 
when Krishna comes in this world, just as a cook adds all the spices in the right order to make a very delicious preparation. So when Krishna comes in this world, the fourth Leela, which is the fourth aspect of Leela, which is not in the spiritual world, is Gaman Agaman Leela, coming and going, by which, the, by the sequence of that Leela, Krishna makes his associates relish the essence of Prema Rasa. So therefore, it is said, Prema Rasa Nirjas Karite Ashwadan, Raga Marga Bhakti Loke Karite Pracharan. In order to relish the essence of Prem and also to um, propagate Raganuga Bhakti in this world, Krishna has come here. So this is confirmed when Shukadev Goswami, he said to Prichit Maharaj, oh, Yes, Swayam Bhagavan comes, for what reason? Anugrahaya Bhaktanam Supunyam Vyatanat Yashaha So then, after Shukadev Goswami described this, he gave a quick glimpse of Vrindavan Lila. He said to Prakshit Maharaj, Yasyananam Makarakundala Charukarna Bibrat kapola subagam subila sahasa nityot savam natatripud shibi pibantyo naryo narascha muditaha kupitani nascha. O Prakshit Maharaj, when Krishna was in Vrindavan, he was so sweet. Yasyananam, his beautiful face, makarakundala charukarna, his uh, wearing. Makarakundal, that means earrings, like a, one creature, a bit like a shark or a crocodile. <laughs> one Vedic, people say mythological creature, but this creature is real, Makara. And his earrings are Charukarna. Charukarna means his ears are beautiful. That indicates that his earrings are not making his ears beautiful, but his ears are increasing the beauty of his earrings. Bibrat <laughs> Kapola. And the earrings are making reflections, shining on his cheeks. Subhaga, hmm? Subhila, Sahasam. And Krishna is smiling. So Krishna's body is like a, the empire of sweetness. His face is like the throne. And his smile is the emperor of sweetness, sitting on the throne of his face, ruling over the empire of sweetness. So Krishna's smile is extraordinarily attractive. Nityot Savam. Shukadev Goswami is saying the gopis and the gopis, the coward people of Braja, they had a festival every day. Every day there was a festival. Of, and Natatripur. Natatripur, Drishibi Pibantya. And even though they were looking at Krishna continuously, they were never satisfied. Because Krishna's beauty is increasing at every moment. And the love of gopis is increasing at every moment. So then Krishna's beauty and the gopis' love are competing with each other. Krishna's beauty says, I am great. And the gopis' love says, no, I am the greatest. And their love increases more than his beauty. But then his beauty says, no, I am greater. Then his beauty increases, then their love increases. And there's no end to the competition between Krishna's beauty and gopis' brain. So they can never be fully satisfied because his beauty is increasing moment by moment. Hmm? So. Tatripur, Drishibi Pibantya, Naro Narascha, Muritaha Kupita Nimascha. And their eagerness to see Krishna was so intense that they used to become angry with Nimi Maharaj. So Nimi Maharaj was a king, he was cursed by Gautam Rishi to become Videya without a body. But the demigods blessed him that he could live on the eyelids of the human beings. So human beings, they used to not blink. But ever since Nimi Maharaj was living there by the blessing of the demigods, now we blink. So when the gopis, they blink, Nimesh. Nimesh means one, one thousand seven hundred of a second. Sorry, no, that's a truti. Truti. Truti is one, one thousand seven hundred of a second. Gopis cannot tolerate. That's just a small moment of blinking of their eyes. Hmm? That is uh, 1,700 of a second times 900 makes an image. So 900 trutis is one image. So one, one truti seems like a yuga. So the blinking of the eyes for Braj Gopis is like 900 yugas. 
And they cannot tolerate and they become angry. Oh, that Nimi Maharaj, why is he living on my eyes? So, Shukadeva Goswami said, Naryo Nivascha, the coward boys and the coward girls. That refers to the gopis and the boys here refers to the Priyana Masakas, not all the boys. Because the, 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 the boys, the coward boys, they have anurag for Krishna. But this in, inability to tolerate the blinking of the eyes is the symptom of Rudabhav, symptom of Mahabhav. So that is in the gopis. And among the coward boys, some boys, like Subal, they also have a touch of Mahabhav. They also see Krishna very beautiful and cannot tolerate the blinking of their eyes. So in this way, Shukadev Goswami, he was giving to uh, Prikshit Maharaj just a little taste of Krishna's sweetness in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, see Krishna has four Madhuris which are not present in any other form. Not present in Lord Narayan in Vaikuntha or any incarnation. Not even present in Dwarkadish Krishna in Dwarka or Matarish Krishna in Mathura. What are those four Madhuris? Rupa Madhuri, his beauty, sweetness of his form. Venu Madhuri, the sweetness of his flute playing. Prema Madhuri, the sweetness of the love that he exchanges with unparalleled devotees. And that brain makes him react. And Krishna's reaction to that brain is his Leela. You see? The Leela of Krishna is his Anubhav. When Krishna realizes, Anubhav realizes the love of the residents of Vrindavan, then he has a reaction. And his reaction is everything that he does. That's Krishna's Leela. So, <clears throat> Here, Shukadev Goswami, he gave a brief glimpse, just in one verse, of the sweetness of Krishna in Vrindavan. Then he quickly described how Krishna then went to Mathura and Dwarka. Then Shukadev Goswami went into Samadhi. He went into trance. And that was the end of the ninth canto. Hmm? So why did Shukadev Goswami go into trance there? He was thinking. Hmm? Oh, if Prakshit Maharaj is eager to hear more about Krishna's Brajalila, then he will ask me. For sure he will ask me. So Shukadeva Goswami just went into a trance, remembering the sweetness of Brajalila. He was exactly like a shopkeeper. Sometimes you go into a shop and the shopkeeper says, um, Oh, would you like a free sample? And they give you a free sample of their cheese or their ice cream. Huh? And then you taste it. And then the shopkeeper is quiet. He doesn't say anything. Because he knows that once you taste a little bit of his sample, then uh, how much is that? <laughs> I'll take five kilograms. <laughs> so in the same way, Shukadev Goswami, he just gave a brief glimpse in this verse. Yasyananam makarakunda lacharukarna. Beautiful verse. And then he went into trance. Then Prakshit Maharaj, he was very, very eager. Uh, to know more about Krishna's Vrindavan Lila. So he began to pose questions to Shukadeva Goswami Pad. So now, Prakshit Maharaj says, Bhavata Soma Suryayaha. O Shukadeva Goswami, you have already described about the Soma dynasty, the Moon dynasty, and Suryaya, the Surya dynasty, the Sun dynasty. Now someone may say, oh wait a minute, Shukadev Goswami described the Sun dynasty first and then he described the Moon dynasty. So why is Prichit Maharaj saying it the other way around? Hmm? The reason is that the Moon dynasty is uh, older than the Sun dynasty. Because first from Brahma came Atri Rishi and from Atri Rishi came Chandrama. Hmm? My Gurudev has made an ashram there in in Lohavan, the Vasamun is Ashram. He's also the, he's the brother of Chandrama, also the son of Atri Rishi. And just nearby, Atri Rishi's Ashram, Atri and Anusuya, is just there. So he's a very famous Rishi, born from the mind of Lord Brahma. So the, the, the Moon Dynasty goes Brahma, Atri Rishi, Chandrama, and then in this line, Yadu Maharaj, and in this line, Deva Midda. Deva Midda, King Deva Midda had a, a wife who was a Katriya and a wife who was a Vaishya. 
from his wife who was a Katriya, he had a son named Sura. And the son of Sura was, Sura saying, was Vasudev Maharaj. And from his wife who was a Vaisha, he had a son named Parjanya. And the son of Parjanya was Nanda Maharaj. And his son is Krishna. So both Vasudev, who people think is Krishna's father, and the Nanda Maharaj are both connected to the Yadu dynasty through King Deva Medha. You see, this is the genealogy. So, but the sun, the moon, the sun dynasty comes from Brahma to Marichi, Marichi to Kasyapa, and Kasyapa to Surya Dev. So, this is why Prichit Maharaj he said, Bhavata Soma Suryaya. You have told about the moon dynasty and the sun dynasty, though it was the other way around. He has put it this way because Soma dynasty is, is older. And uh, so, in the Soma dynasty, moon dynasty, then. Rasik Shekhar Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna has appeared there. So in that dynasty there is a manifestation of full sweetness. And sweetness takes priority over Aishwarya. Hmm? So, hmm. Prachit Maharaj, he said to Shukadev Goswami, Nivrita Tarshar Upagiyamanat Bhavosa Jat Srotama Nobi Ramat Ka Uttama Shloka Gunan Vadat Puman Virajeta Bina Pashuganat. This is a very important verse. It's in the opening of the tenth canto. Prichit Maharaj said, There is a continuous glorification of Krishna's pastimes. Haikata, performed by whom? Nevrita Tashaya. Trishna means thirst. So Nevrita Tashaya means by those great devotees who have no thirst at all for the material existence. Hmm? Those who are Paramahamsas, completely transcendental to this world, they continuously sing the glories of Krishna. They cannot stop. That means they cannot stop speaking about Krishna. Because it is the, their anubha, from their praying, their praying is overflowing in waves of Harikata. So, Nivritta Tasha Upagiya Mana, Babo Sadach, Srota Mano Biramat. Harikata is a Baba Oshadi. Baba means material existence, and Oshadi means. Uh, medicinal herbs. Just as a person who is sick can be cured by medicinal herbs, so a soul who is undergoing the sickness of material existence can be cured by the medicinal herbs of Harikata. Bhavosadat Srota Mano Biramat and those who will hear it, not only will it make them spiritually healthy, but they feel great pleasure. It's pleasing to the heart, and pleasing to the ears. Hmm? So, Ka Uttama Shloka Gunana Bharat. Hmm? When Shukadev Goswami went into trance, then the Qatar stopped. And this is why Prichit Maharaj is saying, Oh, who will stop listening to Krishna Qatar? I want to hear more. He says, Who will not listen to Krishna Qatar? Ka Uttama Shloka Gunana Bharat. Kumambi Rajita Bina Pashubnat. The only person who will not listen to Harikata is a Pashugna. Pashu means animal and Gna means one who kills. So Pashugna means a hunter. Only a person with the mentality of a hunter will not listen continuously to Harikata. Hmm? That means that Karmis, Gyanis, Yogis, all, they also listen to Harikata. They want to hear. They have their other motivations. The Ghanis want to listen to Harikata to get Mukti. Hmm? So they, these different people, they have different motivations. But by hearing Harikata, all of them can become successful and also they'll give up their other desires and come in the line of pure Bhakti. So Sri Daswami in his commentary on this verse, he tells a story. He said once Narad Muni was traveling and he met one prince. So the, the, the prince, he saw Narad Muni and he gave pranam to the great Narad. And Narad blessed him. He said, may you live long, have a long life. Then Narad was traveling 
and he met one Rishiputra, the son of a sage. And he said, oh, may you not live. <laughs> you should die young. <laughs> Get your blessing. <laughs> so then he was uh, traveling and he met a sadhu. And the sadhu gave pranam to Narada and Narada blessed him. He said, may you live or not live, it doesn't matter. Whether you live or you don't live, it doesn't matter. And then Narada Muni met a Pashugna, a hunter. Hmm? When he saw the hunter, Narada was confused for a moment. And then he said, he gave Ashivat. May you, you should, may you not live and not die also. <laughs> <laughs> so someone saw what Narada was doing and he, he was confused. He thought, why is he giving different benedictions to everyone? So then he thought about it. Then he realized, oh, Narada gave the benediction to the prince. Oh, may you have a long life. Because the prince, he's got everything in his life and he's enjoying But because... He, in his life, will commit some offenses and commit some sins. When his life ends, he will go to hell. So better for him, he should have a long life. Hmm? So then, for the, the son of the Rishi, the son of the Rishi is young, but he's doing tapas, austerities. He has a very hard and difficult life. But because he's doing austerities, his mind is fixed. So if he'll die right now, he'll be liberated. But if you live a long life, then maybe after a long time it happens. There's no Rishi in the history of the world at some point in his life did not become bewildered by lust or pride. So, so better he should die now while he's absorbed and he'll be liberated. Later he may fall down. So then he was thinking, well what about the sadhu? Well, for a sadhu it doesn't matter whether the sadhu lives or whether the sadhu dies. Because when he is living, he is speaking Harikatara in great ecstasy and distributing the holy name to everyone and benefiting everyone. So it's very good. And when he leaves this world, he goes to Goloka Vrindavan to see Krishna. So whether Sadhu lives or dies, everything is perfect. No problem. And for the Pashugna, for the hunter, it's better he does not live or die. Why? Because when he is alive, Oh, anyone sees him, all the animals see him, they run away. He's giving pain to everyone. Hmm? And for himself, his life is very hard. He's always working hard, living in poverty and just about surviving. So he gives pain to others and his life is painful. And then when he dies, he'll also go down and suffer in hell. So battery does not live or die. So if now, this is the most important point. Sridhar Swami is, is the original commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam. We're coming to his point now. His point is this, that this hunter, his life is useless. If he associated with the sadhu and listened to Harikatha, then his life could become auspicious. But he doesn't want to associate with sadhus. He doesn't want to hear Harikatha. And therefore his life is useless. He should neither live or die. So, Prichit Maharaj is saying, Pumam virajeta bina pushognat. Who will not listen to Harikatha? Those who don't listen to Harikatha, those who don't go to Sadhu Sangha, rushing there, like a man whose hair is on fire, runs to the river. Hmm? If your hair is on fire, how do you run to the river? Huh? So, you should go to Harikatha in that mood, Shastra said. Janana Maranadi Samsara Anava Santapta Dipta Shirsha Jala Rashimiva Like a person whose hair is on fire runs to the river. You should go to Sadhu San. Those persons who don't have such a mood, then they are Pashugna, they are like animals. And they are like, not animals, they are worse, they are like the killers of animals, like hunters. So, in this verse spoken by Prakshit Maharaj, the importance of Sadhu Sangha and Harikata has been loudly proclaimed to the whole world. Now, someone may ask, Oh Prakshit Maharaj, why are you so keen to listen to Harikata? The glories of Krishna. So he gave the first reason. The how it gives great joy and those even those who are liberated. You know that the jnanis, they do their sadhana, when they're liberated then they leave their sadhana. 
But the devotees, when they're liberated and they go to the spiritual world, they don't stop hearing and chanting about Krishna because bhakti is a jiva dharma, nitya dharma, eternal occupation of all the living entities. If you want to become a resident of the spiritual world, you have to practice here by always remembering and speaking about Krishna. So, that was the first reason. Now the second reason. Prichit Maharaj said, my forefathers, that means Prichit Maharaj's mother is Uttara, and uh, Uttara's husband is Abhiman, his father is Abhimanyu, and his father is the Arjun. So he said, my forefathers, Yudhisthira Maharaj, and uh, Bhim Sain, Arjun, Nakul, and Sahidev, they were in an ocean of danger on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. And in that ocean, there were timing gila fish. Timing gila fish are so huge, they can swallow even whales in one gulp. They're so big. So in that dangerous ocean, the timing gila fish, like Dronacharya and Bhishma Dev and Karna were present. But my ancestors very easily crossed over that dangerous ocean as if it were the water in the hoof print of a calf. Very easily. Hmm? By Krishna's mercy. So I want to hear about that Krishna. Hmm? Now his third reason why he wants to hear about Krishna. He said that when I was in the womb of my mother, then Ashwatthama sent a Brahmastra weapon. It's like a guided nuclear missile. And by that Brahmastra weapon, actually Uttara was killed. And Parikshit Maharaj was killed also. But Krishna appeared there. And by the uh, nectar of his mm, beauty, he revived Uttara and revived Prakshit Maharaj also. So he said, I was dead and my mother was dead also. But Krishna came and revived us. So I want to hear about the glories of that very merciful Sri Krishna. Prakshit Maharaj said, Hey Shukadev, Goswami, you have said that Baladev is the son of Devaki, but you also said he's the son of Rohini. How can a person be the son of two persons? I want to know this mystery. So, when Prakshit Maharaj said this, then Shukadev Goswami said, oh, hmm, Your intelligence is very good. If I just give a hint, then you catch that hint and so many questions come. And these questions are very auspicious for everyone. You know that Shonaka Rishi in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, he says, Munayaha hmm? Salo sorry, Shonaka Sutta Goswami said to Shonaka Rishi, Munayaha Salo Pristoham, Bhavad Bilo Kamangalam, Yat Krita Krishna Samprasno Nenatma Samprasiddhi. Sutta Goswami said, O sages, I have been rightly questioned by you. Your questions are auspicious to, for the whole world because they relate to Lord Krishna. Only questions of this sort can yayatma samprasedati. Here the word atma means buddhi. Buddhi. Here the word atma means buddhi. Only by such questions about Krishna, your buddhi can become samprasedati. Clear, pure and peaceful. That means that in this world, we are asking so many questions. Hmm? What happened to the stock exchange? <laughs> what happened in the election? Hmm? What happened in the World Cup football match? Everyone is asking questions. But by these questions, their buddhi is oscillating, always oscillating, causing them to have vikalpa, imaginary conception of the world, causing them to have the avidya, asmita, rag, dvesha, binivesh, attachments and aversion and absorption in material life and the fear of death. All of this is coming from the instability of the buddhi. But if you ask questions about Krishna, by asking the questions, here it's very interesting, Sutta Goswami is saying, even you don't, if you don't hear the answer, just by asking the question, your buddhi becomes completely niramahal, purified. So what to speak about the ananda we experience when we hear the answer? Understand? 
So muna yung sarap Kristo ham babat bilo ko mga yat kita Krishna Krishna samprasno yat na samprasidity our body will be completely peaceful and satisfied all ignorance all attachment all fear of death everything will go away when we become joyful just by asking questions about Krishna and when one hears the answers of Krishna then what to speak about that. It is said that when the Ganges, the water which has washed the lotus feet of the Lord, comes to this universe, it purifies the upper, middle and lower planetary systems. The three worlds are purified by the flow of the Ganga. So in the same way, three persons are purified by the flow of the Krishna Prashna. Questions about Krishna and answers to those questions. That is, the asker of the question, the speaker of the answer and all those who are listening, three types of persons, by doing achaman in the Ganges of Krishna Kata. So now we should all take a sip of this Krishna Kata. This is Charnamrita. Very, very powerful. But everyone is not purified to the same degree. The person who is purified most by Harikata is the person who is speaking. I excuse me. <laughs> the speaker gets purified more than anyone else. Then the next level, the person who is posing the question, he gets purified. And lastly, those who are listening to the conversation, but they will get purified, but there is three degrees of purification. So now, Shukadeva Goswami is coming out of trance because he's hearing the Krishna Prashna, the questions of Brikshit Maharaj. So hearing those questions, he's coming out of his trance. And now Shukadev Goswami will begin to speak Dasamaskanda. This is most important. In the second canto, chapter 10, there it is described, the structure of Srimad Bhagavatam. Atra sargo visargascha stanam poshnam utaya manvanta ishanukata nirodo mukti ashraya a Mahapurana has ten characteristics. Primary creation of the Lord, secondary creation of Lord Brahma, the position of all the planets, or how the Lord protects his devotees, Poshana, how the Lord gives mercy to the devotees, Uti, Uti means samskars, how samskars uh, impel us to act due to identification with them, how samskars impel us to act, Material samskars make us do material activities and the vicious sanskar that comes from Sadhu Sangha if we are very surrendered we can be inspired by them to engage in devotional activities also. So Uti is one of the symptoms of a Mahapurana. Then Uta Manvantar, the history of the various Manus and the avatars that come during the reign of the Manus. Ishanukata, the Qatar of the pastimes of his, the various incarnations of the Lord and his devotees. Then Nirodo Mukti Ashraya. Nirodo means the prali, destruction, annihilation of the world. There are four types uh, Naimitic Pralai, Nitya Pralai, Atyantic Pralai, and Prakritic Pralai. That's describing the uh, 12th canto. Nirodo Mukti, what is liberation? Mukti hinvanyata rupam swarupenya vivastiti. Liberation means to attain, giving up the forms which are always changing life after life. To attain a permanent spiritual form and serve the lotus feet of Krishna. That is really mukti. And then, nirodo mukti ashraya. So the tenth symptom is ashray. That is the shelter of all existence. So that ashray. The shelter of all existence is Krishna. So then in the next verse, Sukadeva Goswami is saying, Dasamasya Vishuddhyatam Navanam Hiyalakshanam 
vanayanti mahatmanaha srutain artain chandasa which means that the tenth symptom of a Mahapurana is described in the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And the other nine symptoms of Srimad Bhagavatam are there only to uh, distinguish the special characteristics of Krishna. Understand? It's very important. Navanam Yalakshanam. The other nine symptoms of the Srimad Bhagavatam are described only to highlight to emphasize and clarify the speciality of Krishna. How is Krishna special and different from all other incarnations? Hmm? And the source of them. So don't think that the description of Lord Nishingadev in the seventh canto is so that you can become a devotee of Lord Nishingadev. Don't think the descriptions of the incarnation of Vamandev or Lord Narayan is that to make you become a devotee of Lord Vamandev or Lord Narayan. Don't think the description of Lord Ramachandra in the ninth canto is to make you become a devotee of Lord Ram. All of these cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam are there to help us understand by comparison the supreme position of Sri Krishna in Vrindavan so that we'll be devotees of Krishna. And actually the speciality of Srimad Bhagavatam is that the glories of Radharani have been described there. So if you want to be a devotee of Krishna, we want to please Krishna. And the best way to please Krishna is to serve Srimati Radharani. Mm -hmm. So this is the service of Srimati Radharani is the ultimate tatpariya. That means the final conclusion of Srimad Bhagavatam, Radha Dasi. Mm -hmm. So, Vani Anti Mahatmanaha, Shrutein Arteina Chandasa, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Directly through Tena or Artena or indirectly through Kavya, through poetry, through Vyanjambriti, through suggestion. Hmm? The, always everything, the purpose of everything is only to describe the glories of Krishna, but they're directly described in the 10th canto. Hmm. So now Shukadev Goswami is coming out of his trance, hearing the questions of Prichit Maharaj. And he will begin to open the mystery of Sri Krishna's appearance. And that will explain in the evening class. Gaur Premanati! Are there any questions? Does anyone have a question? Yes. It's a question to that class which you gave the first day, where uh, in this verse that itara it refers to uh, these persons who are non-devotees. But how does it difference make like a devotee can also have some mentality of itara? How is it? different to those who are really, how can we understand? No, because if your devotee has some anartha, but he's not attacking pure devotees. This is a discussion, there's a friction between the demons against Krishna's devotees. And by that friction, just as fire appears from friction, so, but the fire was already there. So in the same way, Krishna was already in Vrindavan, in this world, when there's friction between the demons and the devotees, then Krishna appears. So just because a person, the devotee, has some anartas, does not mean that he's a demon. It's just the devotee who has not become purified yet. Ah, yes, Bihari Prabhu. Excuse me? Uh, last you can only overcome when you send Kamgai. Uh -huh. So what, uh, what, what, what way Kamgai is uh, destroying us? Uh, what can I stand Because Krishna is Madan Mohan. All the people of this world, they are disturbed by Madan, who makes it calm, makes attraction to this world. But see Krishna himself, he is so beautiful, that if Madha and Cupid sees Krishna, then he will faint in ecstasy. He will faint because he will feel, he feels so unqualified to serve Krishna. 
He wants to serve Krishna so much because Krishna is so much more beautiful than him. But because he feels unqualified, he faints out of disappointment. Eh? So Krishna is very, very beautiful. And the, all the beauty of Sri Krishna, it is said, <clears throat> Smita kiran suka pure Paishi adar madure Say moedur matai tribu bahane Bongsi chidra akashe Taraguna shabdi paishe Dwani rupe Paya padiname Shri Chaitanya Mahapu said that when Krishna smiles then the rays of his smile are like camphor and the, the camphor of his smile mixes with the sweetness of his face and then when he puts the flute to his lips the sweetness of his smile and his face are mixed together and they enter into the akash of his flute and in the akash, the space of his flute the quality of akash is dwani, sound, shabda so then the sweetness of Krishna's face and his lips is mixed with the shabda coming from Akash in the flute and he plays his flute and it goes everywhere and makes the entire universe become maddened and intoxicated so that sound of Sri Krishna's flute went into the ear of Lord Brahma and became Kam Gayatri then Brahma has given that Kam Gayatri to his disciple and it has come down in our Guru Prampara so when the disciple receives Diksha, the second initiation Guru will give Kam Gayatri in the ear of the disciple that is Krishna's flute, which is actually the Parinam. Here, Mahaprabhu is saying, Dwani Rupa Kari, uh, Paya Parinam. All the sweetness of Krishna has Parinam transformed into the sound of Krishna's flute. And that is received by the disciple from his Gurudev in the form of Kam Gayatri. So then when you remember the Kam Gayatri, then you experience the sweetness of Krishna. It appears in your heart. And then Cupid, who was harassing you, he faints. <laughs> Kanda Pakoti. Not only one Cupid, even 10 million Cupids, they all faint. And they cannot disturb you anymore when you remember the Kam Gayatri given by Gurudev at the time of Diksha. Yeah. <laughs> He's very rustic, so he has to ask this question. He knows the answer, he is trying to inspire me. <laughs>